the promoters so far have failed to make it happen. So let's apply a little pressure. Our four leading middleweights are in the same room for the very first time. Welcome to The Gloves Are Off. It's always been a prestigious division. You go back in history, look at some of the greats, you know, and uh, one I think we're all proud of being part of. Something come back from previous years before, and I ended up coming back to jail and just balls and everything up. But then upon release, then I knew what I had to do. I had an opportunity to go to, to Detroit when I was young, I was 20. I managed to go to in touch with me to get a phone call from him was, you know, it was one of the highlights of my life. And I've added a, a whole different side to my game as a boxer. My career doesn't evolve around Darren Barker or Martin Murray or Andy Lee. I'm going to take the biggest and the best fight, what's best for me, as will they. And to be world champion, that's my ultimate goal. At some states, the, the thoroughbred division, where you've got the athleticism and the punch of a heavyweight. Um, it's, I suppose it's probably the most competitive and glamorous division apart from the heavyweights in the boxing scene. I think so. You think you go back in history, look at some of the greats. It's always been a prestigious division, you know, and uh, one I think we're all proud of being part of. The one thing I've noticed is you guys have not looked at each other once <laughs> since we started. I saw that's broken that's broke the ice at least. Um, there's a bit of tension in here. Can somebody tell me why that is? I think it's because none of us have fought each other. You know, if you go back on the, the super middleweight, the gloves are off. They all fought each other, so they all had scores that were settled. You know, I think between all us here, they're all potential fights that we could get involved in, and, you know, we did, did not happen yet, so that's the reason for the tension, I'd say. So who's happens. running from who on this table here? Because these are fights that, we, that the public have all clamoured for, they've all wanted, and, and I, I personally think now you're all in a in your prime, mm. your prime spot of your career. I don't think anyone's so, running from anyone. I mean, you know, Martin's fought Sturm and Martinez in Argentina. You know, I fought Gennady Golovkin in my last fight. No one wants to fight him. You know, Darren's world champion now. Um, you know, Andy's have you, have, you, have you two ever nearly got it on Andy? Um, since since we've been since I've been boxing, I was really since um, you know you started campaigning in Ireland and stuff. Our name's been put together for the last, how long? Maybe four or five years we've been saying oh, we want to fight That's easy, yeah. Even. When was, I think 2007, you yeah. and Bernard done last yeah. the kick on Martinez, you yeah. fought, that was your first fight in Ireland, Ireland wasn't it? Yeah, and... Do you think he was running? No, at that time it wouldn't have made sense anyway. You know, we were both, I mean, he was very much a prospect, always rebuilding after the Jamie Moore fight, so that would have been the wrong time to happen. I mean, you're at, Brian Peters offered Andy the fight in 2010. You know, it could have made sense then, but for whatever reason you didn't take it then, and. I thought this year it could have made sense, you know, when Lou offered it, yeah. Why May. didn't you take it? Um, the reason I didn't take it this year was because I had just started fighting with, just started training with Adam Booth. I just relocated, Manuel Stewart had passed away. And it wasn't the right time for the fight because I was still adapting to a new style of training, a new style of fighting. And it would have suited you and been an advantage to you for me to fight you then because um, to say, you know, I, I was still in that adapting period of adaptation, so um, I turned the fight down then. It there was no official offer, there was no money, there was no contract, there was nothing like, it was but, just put what about before that? It sounds like a political excuse. And before that, I'm not sure why the fight never happened in 2010. I think at the time Emmanuel was managing me, I think we were pushing for a world title fight instead of, of fighting, coming back to fight you in Ireland. Um, but certainly now it makes sense. I've been with Adam for a year almost. And uh, the fight makes sense. For Do you March. think you can beat him, Andy? Yes. Does everybody think they can beat everybody at this table? There's nobody that's doubting that. But none of us are going to say, "Oh, I think he'll beat me." But I know I can beat everyone on this table. And these will tell you exactly the same. Okay, let's look at the development around the table over the past, because the landscape's changed. <clears throat> You know, I can remember we, we, we've been in the office and we've argued about who's the best out of the lot of you, and it's changed over the last year or so. 
So, so who do you think is the most improved fighters on this table? Well, it'll keep changing, won't it? Because, I mean, there's, it's like, I mean, at the minute, Darren's leading the pack in the fact that he's world champion. But, um, you know, unless we all fought Daniel Gill, you don't know, maybe we all could be sitting here world champion. We don't know. So, yeah. you know, the, the bottom line is he's the champion. He's fighting Felix Sturm, Martin Buckstern, Moy Buckstern. You know, hopefully these fights will come together now next year. Like Andy was just saying then, didn't make sense for him at that time. Well, are, you, are you saying that was the softest way for him to win the World Cup? No, I'm not saying, I'm just saying... Uh, no, well, I don't think it was as tough yeah, as Gennady Golovkin. Stars made fights, didn't you know, they? Because, yeah. you know... That, it's, Gill beats them. Yeah, exactly so. so. You can't... You know, it's... And out of all the champions, you know, I think everyone agreed Gill was the, the weakest one. You know, uh, you know, yeah. Gill's a great fighter, underrated. He is, I've rated him and... Before and I picked Gale to beat Dan. I was made up he went on a money. But out of all the four champions, I, I'd have said Gale was the, the, the best and easiest option. So Darren's world champion. Do you think you're ahead of Darren? Like Macklin just said, he's world champion, so you've got to give him that top ranking for that. But I know I'm a better fighter. I sense that a serious bit of tension between you two. What, what is that about? Where did it come from? It started from basically like Macklin. I've always thought that he's thought that he was a level above us and better than us. And he's kind of like disrespected myself anyway um, on the way up. There was a time where I wanted to fight these two where there was nothing in it for them. Nothing in it at all. You know, there were, it was me who, was, who needed that chance to prove against these guys who'd, who'd established themselves at that level. So there was nothing in it then. Do you know what I mean? But I think as time's gone on, you know, there was a time where me and Macklin could have fought last year on, on the Ricky Atten bill. he just come from a loss from Martinez. I was, um, I accepted the fight. You know, it could have happened, it'd have been a great fight, but then he went and fought Al Seen, I think, in, in America. He's now got your friend as his trainer, as in Jeremy Yeah, Moore. yeah. Good on him, yeah. He's, uh, I was... Does that, does, that, does that bother you? Does it interest you? Does it intrigue you? Not at you? all. Not at all. You know, I know, obviously, they shared a great fight. I didn't and, even know, right? Yeah, yeah, I didn't yeah, know yeah, that either. I know their pals, and why would that bother me? How did that the, come about? The thing you is, two... as well, Johnny, the thing is, if Macklin thinks that's best for him, sound. If Jamie thinks that's best for him, sound. Who am I to say, oh, no, you're out of order for... Well, I couldn't say that to him because he's obviously not my friend, but Jamie, who might say, oh, you're out of order for doing that. Why? He's got a family, he's got, he's got to look exactly. after it's and do whatever's best work. for him. Going back to what you said earlier, the fact that who's running from who, none of us are running from anybody. We, we're all fighters on this table, we'll all fight each other. But it's promoters, it's manage, managers, it's di getting directed yeah, to, at that right stage. And, and television networks, like right now you've got your Martins with Ricky Hatton Promotions and David Deal with Box Nation, you know, I'm with Ludi Bella. Andy's with Ludi Bella. Lou, Lou tends to look to, to work with HBO. Darren's with Eddie Hearn, who works, you know, in, completely with Sky. So there's, there's a little, there's a bit of like logistics there. We, we finally together. have a world champion at the table. This this was a missing link for, for getting you lot together. Yeah. So we, uh, we expected it to be you first, uh, and then Darren's pulled it off. Yeah. So we finally have a, a world champion uh, around the table. So why not? Why has this not drawn you all well, closer I said together? I said the other day, and I think you got the needle a little bit. I because we all, we're all the same, all four of us, we'll always get people on Twitter saying, when are you going to fight, when are you not going to fight? So I was getting loads of messages, so all I said was, why don't you two fight? Not not being funny or giving yeah. it a big or anything like that. Oh, so I mean, all, I said, I, all I said was, you, I, you know, I, why don't you two fight? It was never me I've trying to be... I got with it because it's, you was basically say, trying to say, why don't we, uh, trying to act like a promoter. Yeah, true. To no, me, I mean, yeah, yeah, I mean, and, and but all it I've was got, obviously, I've got my next fight I've got to yeah, get past, yeah. and then you've got yours that you've got to get past. Mm. But so fair, all Darren, I was saying is just concentrate on it them first. It, they it, are there in the future, and, and they yeah, can happen, yeah. but we've all got fights. My thing was, it Nelson. weren't, it weren't trying to fights. act like that. It was more, in, in fairness, I shouldn't have added you two in the, the tweet. I should have, it was only just to answer what people had been asking me. Do you know what I mean? It was. Yeah, but Darren, you went out and proved yourself. You won a world title. You did what none of us have been able to do, or tried and haven't done yet. Yeah. So in terms, you're, you're allowed that respect that, yeah, yeah. why well, don't we fight each it. other? And, yeah. you know, I've, I've as I said, and as you said, well, I'm ready for the fight now. We should get it on in March. There should be no, no reason why. Well, like I said before, Andy, I've always been open to the fight with you. Always St. Patrick's Day, Madison always. Square Garden. My ultimate, my, my main goal, and, and the lads will be the same, is to become world champion. I've always said it before, my career doesn't evolve around Darren Barker or Martin Murray or Andy Lee. I want to be world champion, I've got my own goals. 
I've been involved in big fights and I want to be involved in more big fights, but I'm going to take the biggest and the best fight, what's best for me, as will they. And to be world champion, that's my ultimate goal. But I've always been open to the fight. Like I said, back in 2010, when Brian tried to make the fight and he offered you a good deal, you turned it down. I was up for the fight. You, you, you... I, and, and even this year, I was up for the fight. Now, you had your reasons on that, you know, whatever they were. But That's the thing, I think. I was up for the fight. Fights, you know what I mean? want them to happen. You don't want no one to have any excuses. And I think you was right not having the fight. You just worked yeah. with a new trainer. That, that's... But, but, but now they're both with the same I'm promotion. Saying it's yeah. If there's any there's fight that can be made, there's no now. Now. And I'm on record now, and the fight, there's no obstacle now. We have the same promoter. I'm here. We can have that's the fight. That's, that's, no, there's no hard feelings and no personal will. But um, like you said, and like Martin said, you've always stated that you've been, uh, you know, constantly on... And in different interviews, well, I believe I'm a level above. But you've mentioned my name, not those, all those guys. You've mentioned I'm, you believe you're a level above Andy. You're a level above, I'm a level above Andy. This was you speaking. And, you know, I have to tell you that it has... You know, it does get Bankled. on my nerves. Yeah, yeah. No problem. And, uh, I, no, I'm looking forward to proving you wrong. Look forward Darren, to the challenge. Darren, if you had to pick somebody around this table, who would be the first opponent? It's a fight for you. That's a tough one, isn't it? I sort of leave most of that to, to Eddie and Tony. No, I'm, and I'm, that, I'm asking you, we're, we're fighters here. Forget about the promoters. They're, they're out of this. This is a black room, man. We've got to yeah. talk amongst ourselves. So if you had to pick one of these three, who would it be? I would say Martin. One, because when I sat down with you before the fight, I said I would fight yeah, Martin. Yeah, we have these. these you know, I've said, not. look, <clears throat> you know, we're, we're, we're all family men. You know what I mean? He's got family. It's a potential to, you know, for good money for us. Not only that, I want to prove Martin that I'm the best. He wants to do the same. He wants a world title, you know, and we yeah. said that. So do you believe he's the second best on his table? Oh, I don't know. I'm not, it's, you know, hierarchies and all that, but the the performance he put on against Martinez says, oh, you know, it was a, it, it was a good performance. And, uh, yeah, like I said, when I was sat in that green room last time we was here, so I said... So you're honouring a promise. You're basically, you guys spoke, you said if you win this world title, you're I'll fine. tell you right now, and Martin knows this, I beat Sturm, then I beat Gill, and these are two hard fights, remember. But then I would 100% fight Martin. Yeah. Did you two soften like, Martinez up to make it easy for this fellow? No, you can say that, you know. That, that's what they say. That's what that's what you see on the tweets. That's what people uh, are whispering about. I'm asking from, that, from your point. If that's the case, view. he's all like Sturm. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be honest with you. I thought you was beat before you got in the ring with Golovkin. I really do think that. Andy, what's the method behind your madness of travelling all over the world and crafting your career? Well, I had an opportunity to go to, move to Detroit when I was young. I was 20 at the time, and Emmanuel Stewart had gotten in touch with me, and it was a thrill to be, you know, he's a legend of the game. I was a legend of the game, and to get a phone call from him was, you know, was one of the highlights of my life. And Emmanuel would spend a lot of time talking with his fighters, and you could see that even with Vladimir, he spends a lot of time. With Vladimir, Emmanuel was trying, to, especially towards the end, like towards the last few years, was more talking, confidence building, and and the strategy and discussing the fight, and and then implementing those things in the sparring because the sparring would always be monitored, and there were certain things that would be expected of you. So, Emmanuel was very detailed in what he did, but a lot of the things that he would do was build great confidence in his fighters, and uh, a lot of that was done through talking and spending time going out having dinners together outside the gym. Emmanuel invested a lot of time in the fighters. So you've had the best trainer, you, you've had the best, as far as you're concerned, the best opportunity. But you don't, you're not as accomplished as, as these three here. Mm. Is that a matter of time? I, th I think it's a matter of time, and I think it's opportunity. Now I've relocated with Adam Booth, and I'm learning things that I think I lacked. Adam Why Adam? Adam always impressed me. I watch, I watch all the fights, and I watch all the trainers, and I watch the corner work and you know the pre-fight training and stuff. And Adam always stood out to me as a very detailed trainer, one who knew exactly what he wanted to do, one who was very calm in the corner, and uh, a gracious. No, he had a strategy. I always seem to have a I've plan. I've got a lot of a respect for you, I have, because of the way you've dealt with the loss of Emmanuel. Because if that was me with Tony, if Tony ever stopped boxing for whatever reason, mm. I honestly, at this stage of my career now, I don't think I'll carry on. I have full faith in Tony, what Tony's going to say to me. I know he's got my best interests at heart. He will tell me the best instructions to then go out to the next round. You know, you've got to have a lot of trust in and your coach. So, yeah. you, so you've been with Tony Sims from day one? Yeah. Before I even uh, turned professional. And how did, how did he help you through the loss of your brother, Gary? He'd had, his, he'd had a similar um, tragedy. He lost his sister 
and um, he, he knew what I was going through. But aside from the boxing side, he's like, like I say, a friend. And um, he pointed me in, in the right direction to certain people who helped me through it. You know, I, I got to talk to some good people and um, people who helped me get out of this dark place I was in. And it was a lot of it was, was good because of Tony and his, and his direction. Obviously my family as well, you know, without my family, I, I've got the greatest family and they've supported me all the way. If, if it was, if I'd have hung up my gloves, you know, they would have stood by me obviously. And they, how, how close were you to, to hanging up your gloves? I'd, I'd jacked it in, yeah, you know, I'd, there's no, no way I thought I'd ever. I went back to the gym probably a month after my brother died. I remember hitting the pads with Tony and I just broke down crying. That moment there, I thought, nah, no chance, not not a chance. I was ever going to get back in the, you know, get back in the gym, let, you know, let alone the ring. And again, when my hip went for the second time, I thought, you know, I can't do this anymore. But like I say, having Tony and my family and and some really good friends around me all, all pulled me through it. Martin, you you had a, a tough tough start. Uh, you got into a lot of trouble. Um, <clears throat> you somehow found your way. Yeah. Tell us about tell us about it in the beginning. Uh, basically, I'd, uh, I'd trained all my life as a kid growing up. And when I got, you know, people go out 14, 15, go up and about with their mates. I, I never did that. I was training, come to 17, got introduced to beer, going out, women. And then it was game over. Boxing was just on the back burner for, for years. And during that stage, I'd um, obviously just, just got just got caught up in doing some stupid things. Ended up in prison a couple of times. Um, <clears throat> managed to come out, decided to carry on boxing. At the time, me, me trainer banned me from the gym. If anything went off, it was most probably us who were fighting. So he banned us from the gym, basically saying, you're giving the gym a bad reputation. So um, I tried to get back in the gym, he wouldn't let me. And then he phoned me about a week before the ABAs and said, the weigh-ins next week, do you want to go in? So I weighed in on the week after, fought the week after that, and ended up winning the ABAs. Just completely dedicated to training. Um, ended up fighting for England and got put on the funding for, for England and everything was right on track. And then something come back from previous years before and I ended up going, going back to jail and just balls and everything up. But then upon release, then I knew what I had to do. I'm a qualified youth worker now. I do a lot of work with crime prevention with kids in St. Helens and, and in the Northwest. So I'm trying to do good, you know, just trying to make kids realise the problems that's facing them and trying to turn their lives around, really. So from being rivals, you two could have been best of mates because you were studying law. You could have been defending this young man. <laughs> how, how, did that, how did that pan out? Uh, well, you know, I never really had any ambition to become a lawyer. I just I'd done the GCSEs, did well. When I did my A levels, did well in them. I was boxing amateur. I was on the uh, the funding uh, at the time. I won the ABAs. So uh, you know, going to university was just furthering my education, just carrying on what I was doing anyway. So I was, you know, I was on the funding. I was full time training. You know, why not why not carry my education? Plus, my mum and dad would have wouldn't have been too happy if I just dropped it anyway. So I carried on. I didn't know what I wanted to do. Well, I thought, well, a law degree will keep open a lot of doors. It keep my options open. <laughs> Never had no burning desire to become a, a solicitor, but. Uh, you know, my sister is, but I, I never had no desire to become one, but it was just, you know, furthering my education. Andy, tell me everybody's strengths on this table. Darren's good long-range boxer, can box. Good footwork, good hand speed and good, good instincts. Murray, like, I think he's the most improved fighter here when you asked at the start, because at the start, there was no expectation of you ever going on to the yeah, next one. And you've turned, turned pro late And you became a very, you become a world-class fighter. I think you've got a close range, and you, that's that's where you'd like that's where you like to fight, at, and you can box a little bit. Macklin is good at good at long range and good at short range. I don't think you're exceptionally strong at either of the two, but that's you're more you're more of a rounded boxer. There are things that you could see where I could expose each of them, and that you think like oh, I could beat them. You know, I can see how our styles all, all our styles match up differently. To I'll, tell you, I'll tell you, what, you my, weakness was, will tell my weakness was I didn't like getting hit. Mm. That simple. Who does Use that? a bit yeah. of speed, you know get out of the way, that's it, run mm. for it, run. Yeah. Tell me what your weakness is. <sighs> my weakness. Off Do you think you have head, one? Off the top of my head, I couldn't tell you one. 
I'm, I'd, I'd turn pro 2007, the improvements I've made. I would turn pro the, 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 the latest out of all of us. The improvements I've made in six years as a pro, I think speaks for itself. And I'm still, where I'd say Macklin's on the, towards the end of his career. I'm, I'm on the up and you know, you've not seen, you've not seen the best of me yet. Um, honestly, man, when you were, um, say earlier on in your career, you were a bit more raw and rugged. Before, I think almost in a sense, You've worked so much on the technical side of your game that you've become a little bit too refined. Like in the Martinez fight, especially in the last few rounds, had you got, got, just gone back to being a rough, tough guy, which you were at the start, you could have probably beaten him and maybe stopped him, you know, at yeah. the end. Because you're so uh, technically refined. And, and same against Stone. I, mean, I, was very, like, I agree with you there. You were probably yeah. too calculated. Yeah. You know, just had to throw caution. Yeah. Talk about being over calculated. That's that. what you did against uh, uh, Golovkin. If you'd have gone oh, out definitely. There. I mean, it's, Golovkin's a good fighter, and the, he, the result probably wouldn't have been no different. But I think trying to box him was the worst thing I could have done. No. I, think I, I don't agree with that. I think I should have jumped on him and done that. I don't think the result would have been different. I think it would have been different. I'll be honest with you. I thought you was beat before you got in the ring with Golovkin. No, I, so mm. I really do think that. Where you, th th there's no two ways about it. You're a proven fighter, a proven warrior. You did it especially with Sturm, with yeah. Martinez. You know the fight you was well up for. I can understand I thought going into that. that, and I thought you just accepted the loss too much, and I thought you was beat before you got in. There's That's a, a weakness. Lot, there's a lot of hype surrounding yeah, Golovkin. But it, we all know that. But, but I just thought, psychological, like going back to the Tyson days, a lot of Tyson's fighters were beat before they actually fought him. They yeah. got in the ring with him, and I just thought I can, that's I can understand where you were. If you'd that have been a bit more psychological, I think the result would have been different. I'm it, not saying you'd have won, but I think no, you'd no, have that's what I mean. When I say the result, I'm not saying I won. Yeah. The fight definitely would have been different. There's no doubt, Buddy McGirt knows his boxing. You speak to him, the guy is knowledgeable. But, but are you, are you but, saying it's Buddy's fault that you lost? I'm not saying it's fault. I'm, I'm trying to explain why I fought the way I did. But he didn't. He doesn't. I don't believe he really looked at him enough to study what Golovkin's strengths were. But you did. I did. But I said this to him, and he said, nah, just box. So I thought, all right, then, well, I will box first couple, and then I can adapt. But the problem was, <laughs> as quick as after two rounds, his tail was already up and mine was down. I was already under the cash. I didn't think he was going to be under the cash that quick. I thought, well, maybe I can box my way into it and then get on him. Of course, I knew I had to, at some stage, get on him and be grueling. But what I mean was... In hindsight, I should have just done it from but the get-go. But we know, we know as fighters, once you're in there, you've got your training, he tells you everything, but we see things, no matter how close you are to your training, we see things that nobody okay, else well, if can you, say. If you watch that fight, if you watch, if you watch the fight with Daniel Gill, was it? I, I boxed completely the opposite to the game Because plan. of instinct? Completely the opposite. That was not what we planned on doing. It ended up working, but it was just... You talking about strengths and weaknesses, probably my, my strength is my will to win. I want to win so badly, but that can also be a weakness in the sense. I know it worked that time, but if you wanted yeah, it more than he I did, wanted it you wanted so much that the game plan. When I, when if I'd have stuck to the game plan, you well, I didn't yeah. think it was going to. Be, I didn't yeah, think. Well, and and why, why, why did you do that? I would have beaten him a lot easier. I'm sure of it because it was just yeah. it was Tony totally come up with a master plan which I just didn't execute because I wanted to win that much, you know, and it all went out the window. So that going back, sometimes that can work for you because, like you say. We can look, in Canada, it's easy to say this now, like I thought War, you know, after speaking with Buddy, we said, look, War, if you look at the fight, when I come back to the, after the first round, he's like, move to the right, move to the right, I told you, you've got to keep moving to the right, but every time I, I, I move, I, I, every time I, I move I, to the yeah. right, yeah, he's cut me up, you know what I mean? You know, when I hear stuff like that, we, we get the microphone in the corner, we yeah. can hear what's going on, uh, yes, you're, you're, you're trying to take some of the responsibility, but I no, put it no, down course, to the fighter I'm not, I'm not because I think... Responsibility, the, the book stops with me. At the end of the day, if I wanted to, I can still go and do what I wanted to do. Yeah. But you're still going if to... If, you, if you're paying someone to train you, obviously respect their opinion. So, yeah, you know does anybody here have a chance of being Golovkin? I've still tried to follow the game plan. And like I say, I thought, if it doesn't work, I can go back to what I think. But I didn't think that I'd be under that much pressure that quickly in a fight. Does, does Golovkin knock everybody out on this table? I think he does. I think he's, I think he's, the, I think he's head and shoulders above everyone in the middleweight division. And that just I, does everyone else. I, 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 I obviously don't agree because I, I don't... I know on my day I can beat anyone out there. And I truly believe that. Now, he's obviously, Macklin's obviously going to say that because the, the, the way he dealt with Macklin. But there's a lot of hype around the Golovkin, like I've said, and, 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 and rightly so. But I think that the way you the way you oh, no, with him made him look better fight, than no he doubt. actually is. Do you know but what I mean? You've exposed I, one of his weaknesses that nobody could put the finger no, on, which I, was I, that I, mental No, but it wasn't before. mental. That's how he, I'm no, telling that, you, it, it wasn't it, that I fought the completely wrong fight. Had I fought the right fight, I think the result would have been completely different. But, he probably would have beaten me because I think he's a special talent. But, but is, what I'm saying is, I think the fact I think the fact that he stopped me in three rounds does flatter him a yeah, little yeah, bit. Yeah, that's it what does I mean, flatter yeah. him. But it's like, going back to what Macklin said, 
things change. I'm going back to you with, with Gail. Things change when you're up there. Sometimes it doesn't work out as you planned. Like Andy said just about me, if I'd have put it on uh, Martin is more. Fair enough, I could have done it, but I could have got knocked out. Were you hurt with also, the thing fight? is as well. The, also, the thing is as well, as well as all this, you are getting hit. So yeah. you are thinking, you know yeah. what I mean? You're getting yeah. hit with a shot and you're thinking, Shit, where did that come from? Mm. No, he's hit me with a fast and like, ah, little, and he can hit me with a big one. So you have got to be, you have got to be cautious. And it's easy looking back in hindsight and thinking, yeah. well, if if I'd have done that, yeah, I'd have got it. You, well, you know never know until you're up there. You know what I mean? The game changes, and sometimes when you're up there, you've just got to play it by ear and just get in there and just deal with it. Talking about the game change, you got hit with a, a wicked body shot in the yeah. sixth, seventh round. Yeah. Uh, you, you got up from that. You, yeah. you managed to, 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 to still yeah. stick to your instinct and not to the yeah. game plan. Well, from here, didn't I? Does Golovkin... Do you know what it was with me? <clears throat> Matthew said it then as well. At that point, Gil's tail was up. Mm. So at that, at that point, it could only go the other way. You know, it could only come back, back down a little bit. He'd not be down, he's thinking, oh, I'm on the brink of winning here. Do you know what I mean? So I thought in my head, if I get up from this body shot, I've got a chance to turn it around. If I can weather the storm, and then his tail's only going to start going like that, and that's what I managed to do. We didn't think you were getting up because you were twitching oh. when he was down there. We thought, he ain't getting up. Mm. Your leg was going and everything. You were just, we thought, is he getting up? That nine seconds seemed like an eternity, you know, the things that were going through me here, but I don't know, it was just an instinct. And... As an amateur, you're probably the most experienced, even though Darren's the most successful. He done me as an amateur, didn't he? <laughs> he you guys, you guys fought each other in the amateur, so you, 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 you were the most successful. So when you see uh, what Darren's done and what Darren's achieved... Yeah. I, mean, you... I was very happy. Like, to me and Darren, we boxed for Repton Boxing Club together. We know each other. I know his dad and, and I knew his brother. And so I was happy for him to win, but I have to admit, I got up on a Sunday morning and watched the fight. And even though it was my day off, I went for a run after it because <laughs> I was watching and saying, oh, I, like, uh, I could beat these guys, you know what I mean? And it, it was just so it was, it's amazing, but got to I was so happy that he did it. You know, I, I watched the fight and when you got up off the floor and you, su you survived the first mm. barrage from Gale, in, t in some way you, beat, you conquered yourself and then you beat Gale because yeah. you broke his spirit. When, when he couldn't get you out of the ring, when he couldn't stop you, when he thought he was going to. You broke him, and, yeah. and from that, the fight was easy. I, say, you know I, I mean? sense there was a bit of, well. I wouldn't say jealousy, a bit of envy when you When you won that yeah, title... All, it's all, yeah, that's all what, chasing the same I thing, I'm saying, when you won that title, you realise it was a thin line between success and failure. Oh, How yeah. did your life change once you won the title? Oh, it, yeah. I haven't had much time to reflect on it, to be honest, because this fight has come about so quickly that, uh, bang, I'm straight on to, you know, fight mode again. But... Um, it, it, it's a buzz, don't get me wrong, it's a buzz realising the dream, you know, and then I've had to quickly sort of reevaluate what I'm doing it for, you know, because you said, I think on the night, you know, don't be surprised if we don't fight again. But, you know, I've got a missus who spends money, like, honestly, <laughs> and a little one, you know, and uh, it's about earning a few quid now. It's 100% it, my focus now is about earning money. George Groves and Carl Frotch. How do we see that? I think Groves is going to beat him. I do. Give me a one, two, three, four out of everybody here. Um, this is how it, no, no respect. Uh, number one, if, if I was to fight these guys in, in, in a, I would take Macklin first, I would take Barker second, win the title, and I would defend it against Murray. So you're saying he's, a, he's the toughest? For styles. Um, yeah, I think... Yes, I would. I, would, I think it's toughest. You one, two, three, four. Um, like again, stars make fights. I think. Um, I think I've always thought Andy's made for me, style wise. Um, I think. Darren Who's the be, first? Who's the best? Yeah, well, I'm coming to you. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's styles. I don't think. You know, I'm trying to say right who's best. You're saying with styles. I think, you know, not saying who's best. And the way it works out is that right, right, if you know, we were to always, fight each other in a round one tournament. It, Ma yeah, it'll be him. different. It'll he could be beat him, and yeah. he could yeah. turn around. That's why I'm asking. I'm asking you to yeah. be your one, two, yeah. three, four, as in, as in Martin, Darren, mm. and Matthew. Yeah. What's yours? Well, one, two, like three, say, four. Stylistically, I think Andy's. I've always thought Andy's made for me. So I he's think, your four. Uh, yeah, I think Darren's tricky, but if I could drag him into my type of fight, I think so I'd he's beat your him. three. I think Ma I think Martin would be the, the the most grueling because he's got a very tight defence. He doesn't really load up. He's always looked very solid, um, paced the twelve rounds. So I think that'd be a tough fight. But I'd be, you know, again, I, I'd have to adapt and probably come with a few different things, but I'd be confident of winning. So is your one, Darren? Mine. 
obviously, you know, you obviously everyone you can want. have their opinion, but I am number one. You know, I am number one. I'm the world <laughs> champion. It, that, that's true, and yeah, I believe I'm the best. I, I genuinely do believe I'm the best. I think I'm, As do I genuinely believe yeah, I'm the best. Yeah. But he's officially, I, I he's officially the best. Yeah, no, he's world champion. I am, yeah. But then, you know, I just can't split. I, I honestly You've can't You've got split. to split. We've all got to split. Go on, give, give it you. <sighs> I, I, honestly, I, I have to sit on you the fence. Can't fend. split me, can't split me. You're not, you're you know, I'm, I'm just saying. You know, they're they're all stylistically which one suits you more. Them two fighting each other and them two and them two doesn't necessarily mean that. Exactly. So. No, 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 but no, but from your they're, perspective, they're from your point of view, for they're you to fight, not them fighting each other, who's your, for you to fight, who would you say if is the hardest? Go, I, I can only go by rankings, can't I? So then I'll have to say that don't mean Jack. You know that don't mean Diddley. I'm saying I will be. All three of them. So then how do I rate them? You know, I can't tell you how easy a fight with Martin or Andy or Matthew is going to be, can I? So I'm just confident at beating them. The styles are all different. Exactly. So for me, I can't say what... So which style then do you think could give you the most problems, suppose? Is that what you mean? Yeah. <laughs> he comes at you like a train. He doesn't leave yeah. you alone. And this guy boxes very similar to you. Yeah. So would you prefer to box another fighter? Would you prefer to box a, 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 a bull in a china shop? You know, Which, what does your whoever's put in front of me, I'll find a way of beating them. You might think I'm bottling this and getting out of this <laughs> yeah. question, but, <laughs> I know, but I'm that confident that I'll beat all three of them that I just, you know, I'd find a way of, of winning. All right, you didn't bottle against Gilbert, so you've got to give him that. Give him the grace of a champion. <laughs> at the minute, obviously, I'm, 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 I'm going to count myself out of this, you know, just name, name the three, but at the minute, I've got one, two, three. But, Darren, Andy, Matthew. But over time... I think it'll just change again. Matty at the bottom? After everything he's I, done, the fights yeah, we've seen him in? He's been in some great fights. He's, he's the longest running campaigner for us in, in, in this division and he's fought the top better names. Well, I've fought similar apart from Golovkin. But I just think with, 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 with Macklin, he's been along, around a long time. There's only so much he can take. Are you I saying think. he's sort of shot one? Um, not really, no, because I, I, I think he's going to come again. I do think he's going to come again, I really he's do. What right about a, the Golovkin fight, I think? Because I think the fact it, it, that he didn't it go into him. a mad long yeah. one. You know, I mean, from a pride been... point of view, uh, pride I know what you're be saying, yeah. but from a career longevity yeah, yeah. point of view, mm. it was probably I mean, a blessing. Right. I'll be honest, I think right. the, the, the most underrated is, 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 is Andy. How would you, I really how, believe how that. Would you, how would you beat Matthew Macklin? Um, on about fights, I think Manon is a big barnstormer. I do think that our style will gel more then. Then, then. Um, That's why does I, it go the distance? I would love to watch that. Yeah, you know, it just would. as a does fan. It, does it go the distance? I don't think it does. No, no, I don't think it does. Does it? I don't think so. There you go. I think that the, style-wise, I think me and his fight gel pretty much like his and Jamie Moore. I, I, I think I'm the, the bigger puncher. He's probably got the better yeah. defense. You know, but it, it'd be. I think it'd be. A he good is fight. the bigger puncher, but he, he. What I've always found with you, you, you. Exerts a lot of energy, putting a lot into every shot, mm. which makes you fade the second half of the fight. Do you, even though it's never been set up for you to fuel to fight each other, do you actually go through that in your mind? Do you dream about it? Do you think about fighting each other? Do you, do you devise a I plan, a game plan to. Division. You go through everyone. You see you know. them fight and you match yourself against them. Yeah. You know, that's, that's the way you do what you would do in, against either one of them. But, yeah, I think me and Darren, if we were to fight, it would be, you know, like a throwback to the old ladies. Yeah. But the middleweight would stand up and box, you know, time I think one thing is, sugar for sure, we can all be proud of what we've achieved. Yeah, you know I mean? And I mm. think it shows that, uh, uh, the desire we've all got. you just got to look around the table we've been in the ring with. Yeah, you I, know. Th I think uh, there's more of a chance the fight's going to happen ne next year. I think, I think so, yeah. yeah. I think the time is right well, now. I think me and I, I don't see mm. what I mean. Like, I've got Willie Nelson, so, you know, I can't say I'm going to fight in my match. I've got to get Willie Nelson out of the way, but... I can't see anything then that would stop it from happening. So you've got Willie Nelson next. Yeah. You get through that. Who have you got next? Not sure. So there's no reason why you two couldn't no. fight each other? No. As things stand now, but like you say, things change. You know, when yeah. you, you know things happen. Yeah. But I Perfect. mean, as things Perfect. stand now, it looks like that play, could definitely play, happen. Yeah. I think uh, as play, well. A plain promoter. Don't and give, once, give, I think once it does happen, it will open the door. Yeah. Because yeah, the yeah. winner of our fight could be the leading candidate. Plain promoter, promoter, you two could fight each other. St. Patrick's Day in the garden. The thing is with boxing. A loss, it just, it just proper sets you back, which it shouldn't do. If we could have some type of agreement where it, it's all about money and getting paid right, yeah. if we could have some type it of agreement where, regardless of yeah, exactly, like a round well, robin though. type thing, for, well, four of us.
I know what you're saying. You're like in the Super Six. The good thing about it, it dragged on too long, probably. It but did, the good it thing did. was, if you lost, you were still guaranteed another big fight. Yeah, yeah. Are you saying that's you what should happen with you? You didn't have here. to rebuild. Well, well that's I, what you're kind of saying, isn't yeah, it? it? I don't know. It, it, I know I what he means. If 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 people, promoters, Sky, tell you ever put the right type of money up where we was all where it was all beneficial for us all, and they had that system where it was you got so much for a win, so much for a loss, so much for a stoppage win, so many points. And worked it round that way, knowing that if I fought Andy and I beat Andy or we, he, he beat me, knowing that we could then go on and fight That's another cool, big, big fight yeah, and yeah, between ourselves, rather than saying, oh, you've lost now. Yeah, you've yeah, won, but you know, if I was in a pub and, you, and I said to you, why didn't you box one of these three and you start trying to tell me that, yeah, but we're well, not I in wouldn't. the pub, are we? I just, I just said <laughs> politics, <laughs> yeah, which it is. That, that's it's, all it is. We're not in the pub and it, we're, we're sitting here. We all understand the business. And the reality is, I think it's obvious all of us are game enough to fight each other and prepared to fight each other. That's not really an issue. No one's running from anyone. I think the responsibility is on the promoters and the television to, to like you say, to dig into their pockets and make it happen. As that's well, who can make it happen. But we all want to fight this man. He's obviously the man at the minute with, with, with the world title. And he's got what what, you, what we all want. Yeah. So, so I mean, if you could it. if you could sort it and okay. put it between okay. each other with the IBF or whichever yeah. belt it was, but, knowing yeah. that it could get passed between you, be all right. But it just doesn't work out. Okay, so, 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 exactly. Yeah. So, so Darren fights the man that you two have both uh, fought. You drew. Yeah, you lost. Yeah. It's a tough, is it a tough fight? Is it a tough it fight is. for him? Yeah, he's, no he's no mug. Um, uh, you know, I'm I'm so confident of beating him. The, you know, hence the reason we go into Stuttgart. You know, um, Eddie's done a blinding job with with their lot, and people saying, why did, why didn't you have a homecoming? Why are you gone out there? You know, it's crackers. This is my job as well. I, I've won the title. I can sort of go back to what I'm best at doing and boxing. And I think if I do that on the night, it's going to be a shutout. Let's go to another little grudge match uh, that's coming up in the future. George Groves and Carl Frotch. How do we see that? I couldn't pick my nose because every time I pick a fighter, <laughs> I get it terribly wrong. <laughs> but I think Groves is going to beat him. I do. I'm not, I, don't, I don't know either of them, so it makes them odds to me which one wins. But I like picking an underdog and I, I'm, I'm going to go with Groves. You don't know points. why, but you just, it's just an instinct. It's I just think if it... It, like he got the game plan against De Gale. The girl, uh, right? I think if he can get the right game plan and stick to her, I, d I do think he could beat um, Frotch. 1 0. Groves. Groves, and Yeah, skywise. He's all wrong for Carl. He's, he's, he's mobile, he's good head movement, he's variety punching. And I think it's just um, Carl slightly, he's aged a little bit. And he's not, after after, not the, after the fights he's been in, a he's been in bumped. a lot of wars. And I think Groves is fresh. And um, just the wrong style. For, I just think, for, as long as Groves doesn't get drawn into a f fight, which he sh has done in the past, but shown that he, against De Gale, that he can fight 12 discipline rounds, if he does that, I think he wins. So you're not saying he's, he's, he's shot war? Uh, is that what you're saying about Carl Frotch? No, I just think he's had is a lot he... of tough fights and he's used to fighting head first, head on. If he goes into a war with Carl Frotch, he's getting beat. Yeah. Hands down. If he's he, getting if he smashed and stops. How he's shown. And as I've seen him in the gym, I think he wins. Surprise me, Darren. Too much too soon for Groves, and I think Frotch, 100%. He just hits too hard. He, he's, he can take a shot, as we've seen. Uh, and I just, I, 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 there's no way I can see Groves winning. I, I can't. You're you not know. worried that, that Carl will have little respect from uh, as what, as the same thing what James DeGale did? And and walk into a mousetrap and get pickpocketed out of the fight. I don't think so. I don't think, uh, you know, Cole's going to hit Groves at some point in that 12 rounds. <clears throat> and when he does, he's going to know about it. I mean, getting it off them 16-ounce gloves of Cole is a nightmare, let alone 10-ounce gloves. And uh, I think when he finds Groves' uh, chin, it's, it's game over. But don't get me wrong, you know, I've got a lot of respect for both of them. And I respect mm -hmm. uh, George for, for taking such a big fight you know, at this stage in his career, you know, where I do think it's a little bit too much too soon, but... Mm. Matthew Macklin? I, I, I just think Frotch in a big way. I think he'd go through him. Uh, unless um, unless he, 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 he has aged dramatically since the Kessler fight, which none of us can know that. You only, you only wait and see. But if it's the same Groves that... that um, the same Carl that, that beat Kessler, I think he'd go through him 
within six rounds. I just think, I mean, I think I can see Groves out boxing him in patches and probably early on with his movement and his feints and the little things he does. You know, I can, I can see him having success early on and, and even in patches after that. But I just think that Carl will apply too much pressure and he is going to hit him. And um, he hits very hard. And you know, George has thought about this like, fight. Like just, wanted this fight for a very long time. Yeah. And like in his mind, this is the biggest fight. Obviously, he's he's been living this fight for the last since Carl won became a, since he's turned pro. He's been um, giving up to fight Carl Froch. And so everything he's doing up to this point is to fight Carl Froch. And in his mind, he's gone through the fight a million times, and he knows what he's got to do to be. For, I think. See, Froch the guy, well, well, the guy, well, yeah. the, so the thing with the guy was, he's a counter puncher really, and he's slick and he's he's awkward. He's a southpaw. He's not going to put the. He, he was incapable of putting the pressure on him that Carl's going to put on him. Yeah, and I just think I think he's, he's going to hit him at some stage in that twelve round fight. Andy, he's very heavy handed. Yeah. You know, I, I just think I, I think Carl. He's will got a great stoppage. trainer, Frotch, and mm. and he'll be anticipating the type of fight George Groves is going to do as well. So they'll be working on that. Let's talk trainers. You're with George Groves, ex trainer. <laughs> is this is this ex trainer going to pop up out of the woodwork or is this for real? And uh, we talk in mind games. Has he learned a lot from Adam Bull? He's learned a lot from Adam Bull. Almost when you hear George speak, you can hear Adam speak. Oh, you know, the, the, <laughs> even their speech pattern is the same. Yeah. But Paddy Fitzpatrick is an excellent coach too, um, who George is now working with. But I don't think Adam will. Adam Adam's not involved with George in it or any helping. But they've worked. Like I said, they've been working on the fight to fight Carl since day one. So everything that George knows has come from Adam, and everything that you'll see in the fight, in some sense, will be come from Adam. It's funny you should say that from day one because if you go into our gym, there's a there's a bag that's got Macklin and Barker written all over it. So that's what I've been <laughs> Honest to God, you go in our gym and there's two bags that's got Barker and Macklin written all over it. I used what, to... what one do you eat more? <laughs> <laughs> I, used, I used to dream I used to dream the results of my fight. It's a bit weird, and I told Brendan, and Brendan like look at me and said, Don't tell people that son. Because yeah. it was usually usually right. And so so, so, so how good, you know, will this be? If, 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 if Groves has, has just thought about uh, Frotch constantly 24-7, how good will this fight be? Is he good at winding him up? Because he, he turns he up can, with a nice suit yeah. and tie, he's nice and polite, nice but he's and doing calm it in a very cool. clever way. He's calculated. He's calculated and he's getting under Frotch's skin very, in a very clever manner. He's not doing a blatant he, two-space, he he's not being brash. This stage of Carl's career, as experienced as he is, it's not going to be a factor on the night. You can't imagine oh, but you can see that he's, he's going to lose. So he's getting wound he up. He is in the build-up. When the bell off. goes in the night, uh, the but look, goes, look I at like see him Antonio Tava fighting Roy Jones. All his career, he was let's gear up to fight Roy Jones, and he'd won. It was so long, and he turns up and he beats. You know, no one gave him a chance. And there are certain fights for history where there was one guy who was looking at a champion for so long, and he knows. Like Carl, look at the fights Carl's had, and to Carl George is not even on his level in his mind, and he does believe that. George is near, well, no one near him, shouldn't even be in the ring with him. And you can make a good case for it. But George believes he should be there, and George is ready to be there. But that's the responsibility of a champion. You'll understand that now, because now you're a champion. There's going to be some kid out there that you don't know, mm. Darren, that that's not, you've not even thought about, looked at, or considered. You're now his aim. You're, yeah. now, his, now, you're now all he, mm. he eats, dreams, uh, dreams and thinks about. <laughs> it's funny, I'm just going back. I was thinking of uh, when David A., was talking about um, Tyson Fury, and Fury said, no, I know I'm going to beat him, I know I'm going to be beat him. And David was saying, well, it doesn't matter what you know, it, it, the fact is, he goes, I could say that, I was sitting out and say, I know I'm going to beat Usain Bolt, but it ain't going to happen. It's not going to happen. And I see the same thing with Cole uh, and George. You know, this, even if he does get under his skin a little bit, I don't think that does George any favours, because I just think it's going to make Cole maybe throw a few more punches and more chance of him nailing him. You know, I, d I just well, can't, I, I can't see Groves beating him no. at all. I just think it's too much too soon. Yeah. I don't get me wrong, I'm not saying, I don't think George can become a world champion one day in the future, but not against Cole Froch now. He punches so like they're sickening, yeah, yeah. you know, and I, I know that with 16 ounce gloves on, let alone them 10 ounce gloves on. Because yeah, he's heavy handed, it's not like yeah. he, it's an explosive one punch, yeah. every shot's heavy. And when you get it? it, you stay it with, with Cole, and I, I just think he'll, he'll stay it on the night, I think, George. Boys, uh, it's going to be a great one to look forward to. And let's hope in the new year we see you guys getting it on as well. Yeah. Any chance of a handshake, don't give me that frotch gross thing all over. I'll respect every fight so around here. So I'll, uh, I'll happily well, shake everyone's hand. Oh, my God. <laughs> and you, mate. Up, boys. <laughs> Thank God I'm not a middleweight. <laughs> <laughs>
Nice one, boys. Enjoyed that. Yeah. yeah. Nobody yeah, threw the table over, did they? Nah. No, no, no. <laughs> I think mean, it's better that we didn't really say much beforehand, so you can all just talk. You get out of here, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Well, the one's a bit. It was a bit sensitive. I thought, aye, aye, it's going to kick off here. Be cool, boys. But yeah, yeah, nice one. It was yeah. good, though. Nice work. Watch all six Sky Sports channels on your mobile and online.